Hey, so we're here on the scene of one of the uh, largest ecclesiastical edifices uh, in the state of Texas. Uh, this is the Stonebriar Community Church, and uh, we are at the Church Repent Project. What we are doing here at this Church Repent Project, and this is uh, crucial for people to understand, what we're doing at this Church Repent Project is we're not hating the Bride of Christ. We are loving the Bride of Christ, calling the Bride of Christ to victory. It is a low, very, very, very low ecclesiology, a very low view of the church to look out at this culture and believe that the church is powerless to establish the rule of King Jesus in every single area of life. That is a low view of the church, a very, 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 very low view. We are calling the church to victory. We are calling the church higher. We are calling for the revival outside of this large ecclesiastical edifice where Christians are filing into the building thinking that Taco Tuesday, business as usual, regularly scheduled programs as usual is going to cut it in the face of the God of the age, in the face of humanism, in, in the face of the idol of the age. And we are here with the news that the gospel covers every single area of life. And in Matthew 28, Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me. How, how much authority has been given to Jesus? All authority has been given to me, says the Lord Jesus. Now go and make disciples, teaching them all, everything, every last thing that I have instructed you. The entire counsel of God that covers every single area of life. The dominion mandate. The ability for human beings redeemed to go out and show what the kingdom of God looks like with the same power that raised Jesus from the grave, that created matter, energy, space, and time. And as I'm preaching here to the, li to the live audience on Facebook, I'm also preaching to these cars that are filing in. They think Taco Tuesday, regularly scheduled programs, milk, Christianity is going to cut it. At the end of the day, it most certainly is not. In the state of Texas, there are over 60,000 babies every year that are slaughtered on the altar of Moloch, the king state, the humanistic state. There are over 30,000 churches, 30,000, 30,000 churches, 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors. The resources behind me alone could shut the practice of humanism down in a huge area. The resources represented behind me in that ecclesiastical edifice, if directed towards the kingdom of God, could shut down humanistic education in a city, could shut down lawlessness enforcement, aka the police in a city. The resources behind me, if used by Christian missionaries about 150 to 200 years ago, would have converted an entire country of Muslims. Yet, we act powerless. We act like there's nothing we can do except pass the plate and practice our regularly scheduled programs. You know, the trips to Canada, the uh, ministry cruises, yearly visits to Israel, you know, because we can't let anything disturb the, the comfortable practice of what we think is the kingdom of God. Well, let me, let me be 100% clear. The kingdom of God is where the rule of the king is applied. Jesus did not come to give fire insurance. 
Jesus did not come just so that your soul could be satisfied with a place of rest after you leave the dirt that he created and created you out of. Jesus didn't just come as Savior. He came as Lord and he came with power and he came on high on the clouds with fire and he is not to be mocked to take resources that Christians give and then to use those resources to pay for fat salaries and big buildings when the practice of child sacrifice and the God of humanism is ensconced in the high places in every single area of this state, whether it's lawlessness enforcement, whether it's, it's the prison industrial complex, whether it is humanistic incubation centers for the rising generation, you will never hear about idols like this attacked in this ecclesiastical edifice behind me. You'll just, you just won't hear it. You just won't hear it. We'll have another sermon about persevering through trials, about having your best life now, about how to live, how to put on the armor of God and stand fast at, 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 your, at your workplace. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, God is not mocked. And church repent is a project of love. We are calling the bride of Christ higher to victory saying, do you know what is in your hands? Do you know what you've been entrusted? Do you know the fire of God that you have been entrusted with? The Holy Spirit that sat between the wings of the cherubim is now resting inside you. Empowering us. In our culture today, when the churches repent, we are going to see a wide-scale revival. But there is no revival without repentance. Everyone agrees. There is no revival without repentance. And we want our calls to repentance to be given through the regularly positioned elders, so-called. We want our calls to repentance to come within the very same lightless lampstand that the signs of the times testify against. We are prideful. We are prideful. We think that we can dictate the terms by which God gives us his truth and calls us higher to be the Proverbs 31 bride, executing the affairs of the king everywhere, in every single area of life. And here we go, we got like, I got my man Jason Sanchez here, abolitionist Jason Sanchez talking to, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is this is how it works. We're trying to call the bride higher. The problem is that every day, every Sunday in America, should be one of the saddest days for Christians because yeah. we're all falling into these buildings. Yeah. We all single crazy, but we need yeah. to do we need to do something. So yeah. How, what's the what are the legs theology, of the moral opinion look like? Our theology and our orthopraxy yeah. need to match up. Yeah. So when you've never been to our church. Yeah. It's not about yeah. going to a building. Yeah. We are yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, I, no, we are no, church. Church. Sure. Oh, sorry. Sure. Yeah, everybody's, every, you, if you talk to a congregant, everybody's church is the best. Everybody's church is different. Yet the fruit of the land remains. If we were in, and this is how, this is how, this is how ageist we are. If we were in Nazi Germany, if we, if we rewound back to 1941 in Nazi Germany, and we saw Christians outside of the churches saying, hey, we got to stop this Holocaust. Would we go out there and say we're doing enough? It's never enough until it's abolished. It's never enough. And is the church really in a, stance of, in a state of repentance? Jason Sanchez, founder of uh, Reconstructionist Radio, my good friend, my abolitionist, standing here shoulder to shoulder with this man on the sidewalk. What do we have here? What, 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 do, you, what do you got for, for the, uh, yeah, for what the people? What I got is this. Yeah. Every Sunday in America, yeah. for professing Christians, should be a day of grieving. Why? Because it's evidence that we've done nothing. These churches right here, 
these these they're not it's not a church we are the church this is a congregation where where professing christians come to worship god per se the problem is this is happening down the street every 30 seconds an image bearer of god is slaughtered in the womb and this is not counting those who, who are being murdered through uh, ivf and through the uh, abortive fashions that are out there yeah. and the fact of the matter is these, these christians are apathetic just like i was apathetic at one time and that's why we're out here to agitate the culture to awaken them of their apathy and yeah. until the, the church rises up and when i say the church i mean the one body of christ rises amen. up amen. to combat the, combat this evil amen the enemies are going to continue to do what they want and spit in god's face as my brother here talks about god yeah. knitting together these image bearers in the womb and then these humanists are just pulling them out and throwing them back at god and saying we don't want them wow wow we need to wake up christian we need to wake Amen. up and we need to understand that this is true and undefiled religion to care for the orphans and the widows Amen. not going to a building Amen. Amen. okay Amen. that's all i gotta say amen and and at the end of the day there comes a time there comes a time when the sermons go to the sidewalks there comes a time when the voice is lifted up in the wilderness against evil if it won't happen from the pulpit inside of that ecclesiastical edifice, it will happen on the sidewalks. Jesus said the rocks would cry out. Amen, Pastor Callie. Our God reigns supreme, and we are calling Christians to victory. We are calling Christians to say, there's no Christian, real Christian that looks out at this culture and says, yeah, this is a viable expression of the bride of Christ walking on earth. This is the amount of power that you have. In other words, nothing. So you might as well go ahead and preach your, your same programs, keep the same inflow of money coming, keep the same building programs going, keep the same so-called missionary trips going, and on and on and on, and just keep the cycle going. Jesus is honored with what you do. Jesus is not mocked. He is not mocked whatsoever. And what we have in the state of Texas is a microcosm of what's going on in the culture at large. Texas is supposedly a so-called conservative state. Yet if you talk about establishing the law of God, if you demand the law of God, they will cry out for the law, lawlessness of man. And the Bible only has two categories. The lawlessness of man and the law of God. There is no in between. It's the lawlessness of man and the law of God. And we are calling the bride of Christ to establish the rule of King Jesus in every single area of life. Now the foundations of God's throne are what, Jason? Righteousness and justice. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And he cares about the least of these. As he knits the image bearer of God together in the womb, in the Holy of Holies, through our humanistic bastardization of science, we have found a way to unravel the image bearer right in the womb. Now, the edifice behind me, the ecclesiastical structure behind me, chances are there will be some women in this structure right here, members of this church that have taken plan B a day or two ago. And as they are lifting their hands to the Lord God Almighty, an image bearer that he and knit together in their womb is being destroyed. Destroyed. That is unacceptable. That is why the lampstand of the church is gone. That is why the lampstand of the church is gone. That is why we are salt, saltless salt underneath the feet of pagans. That is why we need to repent, but the good news is if we repent, if we fall on our face and say, Lord, this is not what you call the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where the rule of the king is obeyed and we repent for our wretchedness before you. Repent with us. We repent of our wretchedness before your throne. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness and bless us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire to go out and establish the law of God, establish the kingship of Christ over pagan idols.
Brothers and sisters, we're, we're called to exhort one another daily. That's a command from God. Amen. Ask yourself, when, when was the last time that you exhorted your fellow brothers and sisters? This right here, when we say church repent, it's an exhortation. It's Hebrews 3.13 in action. And, and we got to do this, brothers and sisters. We need to rise up, not just on, on Sundays, because every day is, is a holy day to God. Worship is service. And worship happens every day of, of seven days a week. Amen. So let's exhort our, one another daily, lest we fall to the, the, the deceitfulness of sin. All right? Amen. Amen. To learn more about Church Repent, you can go to churchrepent.com. You can go to churchrepent.com. What we are doing out here, look, everyone says the churches need revival. Everyone says there needs to be a reformation going. Everyone says that what is going on in our culture is not a genuine manifestation of Christianity. Yet, yet, when one person says, church, repent, they all get upset. Who are your elders? I want the names of the men that sent you out here. I want the names of the human beings that are allowing you to call the church to repent. These are the Matthew 23 scribes, Pharisees, and religious leaders that just want to keep the cycle going, that just want to keep the regularly scheduled programs on time, that want to have their bank accounts fat, and that want to have the greetings in the marketplace. Hello, teacher. How are you doing, esteemed teacher of the Word of God? You great exegete of the Word of God. I mean, did you see that pastor's video? Did you see? It went viral. I mean, he, he just put it down. He talked about salvation and he didn't compromise at all. And it's all over the place, right? Donate now. Donate now. Donate now. Support this ministry, right? At the end of the day, that is not how reformation, that is not how, how revival, that is, not, that is not how a move of God is initiated, is inaugurated. The only way a move of God is inaugurated is if his people, his bride are on their faces saying, we give ourselves fully to you. We surrender. We will not send our children to humanistic incubation centers. We will not allow lawlessness enforcement to take place on the streets. We will not allow the, uh, the, the pagan temple mindset of, uh, of sexual perversion to run rampant and protected by law, so-called ensconced in the states and in the federal beast we will not allow the practice of child sacrifice on the altar of the moloch state which simply means king we will abolish human abortion that even if it takes everything even if it costs our lives even if it costs us our earthly freedom if it costs us everything that we have that we lay it down on the altar of our God because this is a reasonable act of service. And I'm not yelling at y'all, I'm yelling at the cars and uh, if there's any churchians that are out here in the parking lot and everything like that, that's the only reason I'm lifting my voice like this. I'm actually not angry, I'm just passionate and filled with the spirit right now to deliver this message on the sidewalk, on the sidewalk. Because we love the bride of Christ. Because we see victory in the future, in history, for the Bride of Christ, according to the Word of God, according to the covenant faithfulness of God. And we're saying that there is a disconnect, and the only way that disconnect can be fixed is through repentance. Is through repentance. Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, silence in the face of evil is evil itself. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And holding a moral opinion while not acting on that moral opinion that lines up with the Word of God. Understanding what the Word of God says and being so-called against abortion or even against police, if you can find that. Or even against uh, humanistic incubation centers, but not actively, actively putting boots on the ground in the fight is worse than if you didn't know at all. It's worse than if you didn't know at all. Our church is pro-life. We give to a crisis pregnancy center. Our pastor preaches against public education. Well, you'd be fortunate to find that. It's just not enough. It's not enough until the boots go on the ground, until we believe what we say we believe, enough that we act out on that belief and it just becomes part of our integrated life to preach, declare, and live the victory of God in all areas. 
All right, we'll be back. Uh, if you want, uh, everybody's in the in the uh, uh, in the in the religious meeting right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back uh, when the cars are leaving. That will be live on the War Room Facebook page. That'll be live on the War Room Facebook page. Do you have a uh, closing uh, exhortation for the live audience? Just take this word and and, uh, and ponder it and uh, put it into action. I mean, we can have our theology all straight and uh, we can we can think that we're all correct and everything that we're, that we're thinking or that we believe, but unless we put it to action, you know, I'll show you my faith by my works. We all know we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace through faith. But God saves a person to do something with them. It's not just a ticket to heaven. That's, that's a secondary thing. That's what happens later on. But right now we're living on this earth and we're ambassadors of the King of Kings. And if we're ambassadors, that means we're representatives of him. So check yourself, check me, check my brother Joe, check each other, whether or not you see fruits that are, are glorifying to God. And uh, Amen. we don't have a, a set way of doing things, but pray to, pray to the Father and, and that the Amen. Holy Spirit fill you with a direction on what to do. There's so much that needs to be done. I mean, this is just a little tiny, tiny little fraction of the things that we need to do to, to get rid of this evil of abortion. Amen. So uh, we need people doing all kinds of stuff. We need lawyers. We need doctors. We need everything. So just uh, Godspeed, and uh, we love you guys. Last thing real quick. Let me let me read the back of this pamphlet right here. Can you hold this uh, yeah. this camera right here? All right, so this pamphlet are the churches guilty again. This is uh, this is online at abolishhumanabortion.com in the gear store. It doesn't really cost hardly anything. And uh, let me read you the back real quick. You may choose to look on. The church has looked on while injustice and violence have been done under the cover of the name of Christ. You may choose to take the other side of the road. You may choose to look away. The church has been mute when it should have been crying out because the blood of the innocent has been crying out to heaven. The church confesses that it has witnessed the arbitrary use of brutal force, the suffering in body and soul of countless innocent people, that it has witnessed oppression, hatred, and murder without raising its voice for the victims, without finding ways of rushing to help them, and has become guilty of the lives of the weakest and most defenseless brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, Diedrich Bonhoeffer who pretty much practiced one of the first church repent projects in the state of Germany during the Nazi Holocaust. We are in the American abortion Holocaust where the God of the age is humanism. And until Christians start acting like Jesus is king in all areas of life, we will continue to see the state of the culture unravel with imminent judgment and punishment and fire from God. The church must Repent. Repentance, revival, reformation. Semper reformanda.